challenge statement itself, um, it's a very long statement, and I want to just zero in on a few points. Uh, the key thing that I'm get, I want to get across here is that we have the uh, pre-hospital visit journey, and there are a lot of points where people start looking for answers and trying to figure out how do I get, do I need to go to a hospital? Do I, who do I need to see? How do we aim to improve on those pieces and give them the services they're looking for? And then of course, when you get into the hospital, I think all of us are familiar with the pains around healthcare. Um, moving, not the treatment itself, those can be painful, but um, the, all the different places you need to move around, the, do, am I, do I have enough information? Am I making the right decision? Is this the right care path that I need to go down? Uh, areas we're looking at. And of course, even after you go for a procedure, you've gone to see a doctor, they will pro provide a diagnosis and a therapeutic, uh, therapeutic care path. What should, how do we ensure adherence to that care and make it as easy as possible for you to uh, complete that care program post-surgery, um, post-treatment um, uh, care path that you're looking at? So, when I think about um, the, the patient experience, it runs throughout the entire uh, journey from the start to when you're first realizing you're feeling ill to the end path when you recover and you get back to your normal life. And there are things that we can look at shortening it. There are things that we can look at streamlining it. There are areas that we are looking at how do we minimize your, your visits to the hospital so that um, it reduces the inconveniences to your life as well as Allow, allows you to decide how you engage with healthcare and take, lets you take charge of your health. Um, and that is where we are thinking this innovation challenge can help us because there are specific things that we are exploring, we are identifying, but we are open to any of the challenges coming in and helping us sharpen up what are we doing here? Or do we think, is there something that, is there a solution out there that allows us to uh, rethink the entire care journey. How do we provide that delivery of care? So the point here is we are very open to ideas. We do want to hear what suggestions you have and we are open to whether it's a complete revamp and rethinking the care approach or some more minute sections of it. And uh, next slide, please. Or more minute portions of this care journey. Now we've talked, this is just a very high level overview. And of course you have more this detailed patient journey paths, um, whether you're on outpatient track or you're inpatient track, whether you're a chronic care patient or you're a, um, or is it like an incident, uh, incident piece where you have picked up a sports injury, a fracture, something and you need to recover. But we are looking for things that can either stretch across this entire journey uh, or specific sections of it, such as the fine care options, the scheduling of care, the getting the care when you're in the hospital itself, um, from the moment you walk in to when you get your medication, to um, understanding the payment process. Because again, there are different levels of um, pains here. Now, in Singapore, we have MediSafe options. We have... Uh, um, a lot of us are very heavily insured, so we don't we don't necessarily think about care. But there are those that fall outside of it, and they need to understand what parts of it, what types of care am I insured under, what parts am I cash payer, and especially for those who may not necessarily be able to, uh, who are not necessarily covered under insurance, may not have enough Medisave. How do we widen that uh, reach to them? And of course, once you are going through that process, once you've gone through the diagnosis, the treatment, that uh, recovery process, uh, what is the care plan that you're going through? How do we help you follow, provide follow-ups? For example, when you see a, you've gone for a total hip replacement, total knee replacement, after that, you're worried, you're, you are recovering. There is rehab steps to get you moving um, and getting you used to being more active again but there are times when you might have questions or you might need to, or the, the doctor might suggest that as part of it, there is a need for a weight management plan um, to, uh, or change in lifestyle habits to improve your overall health. How do we deliver that care a little bit more effectively? Um, and as I said, the original point, getting them back to the, the, the life that they would like to live. 
and is there partners that we would like to interact uh, do we need to connect with in the larger health continuum so um, next slide please and across these things we've observed there are several common pain points that are faced by patients um, I don't know how many of you have gone through a treatment a procedure but a lot of it comes down to the one of the main points what is the overall process what is the progress where am I in my care path you're not necessarily well informed the doctors will just tell you okay you need to go for an operation or you need to go for a cornea transplant and it's better for us to schedule that as fast as we can uh, the question is what are the options were made available to you uh, what am I going to expect out of this care program? How long is my recovery going to take? Uh, very dependent on your relationship with your doctor and whether you can ask them. Um, next point is, again, goes back to, we have some information around uh, our health profiles, but for those who are going down the path of private medical care, you rarely have access to your personalized, reliable medical information. We want to make this more accessible to patients so that you know if you've gone for a health screening report, you know what it, what it says about you, you know how you're doing, and you have specific recommendations to improve your health. Whether it is a weight management plan, it is changing your diet, whether it is a question of stress management, um, that we can help you track and monitor and guide you along to a better lifestyle. And then we have um, the pain points of hospital bureaucracy. How do we streamline the administrative process? It's a question of from registration to um, moving around from department to department, from the specialist clinic to the lab, to the diagnostic radiology department, to uh, payment, to pharmacy. Um, there are areas here that we can look at streamlining it. Um, right now for our specific case, a lot of this is a very manual, physical uh, issue. Um, and then talking about patient anxiety, again, it talks about that it's a very physical manual piece. You need to ask your doctor what's the upcoming procedure, um, what can I expect out of it, how long am I going to be recovering from it, can we guide them along this path. We've seen examples from the US, we've seen examples from the UK where you could have a short video introduction of what you expect to go through. Are, there, are those things that we could look at? Um, and then for us, again, administrative process. It, if you're going in for a surgery, how do we streamline the process of passing on that letter of, how, how, uh, sorry, streamline the process of getting that letter of guarantee? Um, how do we um, um, smoothen out the bed, that the bed is ready for you, that you are ready to go out, as well as when you are ready for discharge, how do we make that as smooth and as quick as possible? Um, and then for those who have elderly patient, uh, elderly family members going undergoing treatment, um, those sort of caregivers, the families themselves are the ones that want to be kept informed about what's happening with their care program. Are they out of surgery? Are they back in the ward? How did the surgery go? Um, all these are pain points that we are looking at trying to improve on. And the post-discharge adherence, I think this was on the industry track as one of the challenge statements. Uh, how do we keep people to complete their treatment to ensure that we are leading to better uh, the desired clinical outcomes that we want for our patients and helping them. And as well as on the other half of it, the chronic, man chronic care management. How do we keep people um, adherence to that uh, chronic care management plan? So these are the main points I have. I'm, next slide, please. And I want to open this up to questions because I know we are very, very broad um, an approach and I want to see the specific areas that you would like to get clarity on or how interested are we in those specific areas. Yes, um, the, for, for the attendees, you can click on the Q&A button and ask your questions there. I just want to quickly address a question that Gabriel has uh, about the link to download this particular presentation. We will uh, be following up with an email with you with the links, but uh, in case you miss it, you, you should be able to find this, uh, the links uh, to the presentation uh, decks and the video on the website, uh, healthcarechallenge.sg in a few days time. 
So for the rest, um, if you've got questions for Dylan. No, um, I'm seeing a question from Andrew Watson. Yep. Are we interested in solutions that cover all of these points? No, I would say that we are look. I would say in a sense, we would break it up into three distinct care paths. Uh, the pre-hospital visit, the in-hospital visit, and the post-hospital visit. Um, and in that regard, we are open to solutions that look at any one of these three. Any other questions for Dylan and the team from HMI? Whilst you're waiting, Dylan, if you don't mind me asking a couple of questions, um, what what current what forms of data, what types of data on, on the patients that you currently have or are collecting or wish to collect that would really help uh, with this patient engagement experience? Um, so right now what we collect um, is very much patient de demographic data. This is name, age, the doctors that you have seen, um, billing information. Right now, we are one thing that we would like to do is to be able to um, collect clinical data. And this is where right now we are very, very pen and paper. We don't have an EMR right now. So, but when we think of an EMR, you don't want it to be too standalone and we have challenges around, it doesn't make quite sense for us to implement something like an Epic solution. So we're looking for something that's a little bit more custom, a little bit more um, um, specific to our cases, because what we want to be able to do is connect a lot of the different touch points, which is clinical data, the demographic, um, general information around patients, and then we want to tie it into if we are developing any patient portal um, or patient portal, patient engagement platforms, or helping them live their path on offline. Uh, sorry, uh, engage, uh, treat their, uh, oh, sorry, find treatment or pursue their health care, health plan online, uh, connecting it back to the clinical data so that those inputs are captured back in the EMR um, or into a, like a shared data warehouse that EMR separate data warehouse contains the three view of it. Um, an idea is be able to use that to drive the data analysis, what types of patients are more suitable to take up digital paths, digital pathways versus those who might need more uh, direct engagement, whether it's a visit to the hospital or is it whether it's a nurse calling them up to follow with those questions. Um, so for health screening, it's again a very offline thing. So that's that. so you book your appointment, you come down to the medical, the health screening center at our hospitals or our medical center. Uh, in the morning, you register, you see the, uh, you register, the nurse takes your weight, takes all your measurements, you go see the doctor. After that, you're allowed to break your fast while you're waiting for your results. Well, sorry, prior to that, they were conducted any other tests that they would have done. Um, I think, um, and then you get your results and then you just take it and up to you what you want to do with it. Um, the questions that I would have is, Problem pain points that are worth solving. It's a, it comes down to what does this health screening mean to me? Why, wh why is what does why? I mean, it tells my cholesterol is high, uh, my BMI is high, and is there any kind of recommendations? They might give you a couple of generic brochures, but we are looking at some. Is can we create a guided path to help them to live to better lives so that you can see that progressive improvement? Um, in regards to health screening, because otherwise it's just a paper that tells you, yes, I'm either fit or I'm unfit, I'm, un I'm healthy, I'm unhealthy. And I think it's that part. How do we make the health, the key point to Dixon, your question, how do we make the health screening actually useful to you? Thank you. And um, Gabriel's questions, would you be interested in a solution for a specialty care path, namely stroke rehab in clinic or post discharge? Um, Sorry, I just want to check. Is uh, Ching Yi a panelist? Can yeah, she? Uh, yes. Yes. Do you want to take this question, Ching Yi? Yeah, we are actually developing clinical pathway both in Makota and Regency as well. So if there will be a solution for it, it'll be good. Right now, we are doing kind of like manually and then we do it together with the team. Uh, but it, it is quite tedious because we have to speak to the doctors, the nurses, the like, health team and, and so on. So if there will be an integrated program that we can work with together collaboratively, they'll be really helpful. 
and also that is on the implementation part. But to look at the clinical outcome side is something that we are we are working and exploring on it. Okay. Yeah, I mean there are a few clinical paths that we are looking at. Uh, yeah. Stroke is one of them. I know diabetes, uh, chronic right. care. Man. Yeah, right now we are doing four or five uh, different uh, specific clinical pathway, which is what Dylan has mentioned just now on the stroke, heart attack, um, ACS network to, for activation. Um, some is within hospital and some that we need to collaborate with the GP outside that makes things a little bit more complicated. Yeah. Okay. I hope the answer. Right. Thanks, mm -hmm. thanks very much. I, actually, um, on, on that note, uh, if you don't mind me asking a follow-up, question yeah, on that. Sure. What sort of tech solutions have you all um, tried before in addressing some of these, um, you know, this, this particular challenge uh, and these pain points? And what was the, the experience of it in terms of um, if somebody is going to pitch a solution to you, what are those key things that they should um, you know, take in special consideration um, of, of your context or, or, or your organization? Um, if, if I may, I would think it's a trusted communication uh, tool that uh, provides us with the clinical decision pathway that we can either build into it or we can like preset into it and then it can be updated as accordingly to how the guidelines are updated. So that we stay up to date in providing our, our care to the patient um, and also up to the accuracy and clinical outcome that we want to uphold yeah, the standard tool. Because it can get quite complicated when the case becomes emergency with the workload and then juggle with the communication and part. So that would be really helpful, like a trusted and reliable communication pathway and gives you the alert when it needs to. Um, and it helps you in, in providing the care to the patient. Okay. Just to clarify, that tool is more for the use of your healthcare professionals rather than for the patient. Yeah, so there is internal process um, that we're looking at improving. Yeah. There's also some remote monitoring pieces, uh, remote monitoring that we've looked at specifically for diabetes that we are piloting or going to pilot soon, right, Chingy? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it will be both way. Like the patient can access to us and we can access to them as well. For the healthcare professional, it will be two sides. Like internally, what we do and what we communicate to the patient. For the patient side, it will just be what is uh, what goes according to their, their, their conditions. Yep. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Dixon has a follow-up question. Mm -hmm. From the perspective of the healthcare provider, do you have an intention to outsource the health screening tasks to reduce your workload? Okay. Um, may, maybe just uh, you can help me understand, Dixon. When you say health screening tasks, are we talking at the actual health screening or the specific parts of the health screening that you are uh, uh, considering around in regards to your solution? If we were talking about the overall health screening experience, um, I think what we are we are probably not going to outsource the entire piece. What we would look like look at is being able to deliver this on a more remote basis. So we know we're aware of some remote um, medical devices that you could either administer yourself or quick devices that a medical practitioner, not necessarily a doctor, but a nurse could administer to get readings to inform the health screening. This will allow us to um, broaden our coverage, our network of people, of, uh, broaden our coverage of um, patients that we could reach out to um, for the health screening itself. And that's what we are open to. Okay, examples, urine sample collection, blood sample collection. Uh, yes, we are open to this if this is something that could be uh, helped us. Uh, but it comes down to if a patient comes in for a health screening, they would expect the results on the same day if that can be done and delivered in the same method. Uh, that still either meets the current SLA for uh, health screening or improves on it, that is something we can consider. Okay, uh, thank you, Dylan and Chingyi. Um, so I think um, it's just about time to wrap this up. Um, any final comments, advice um, from you, Dylan? Okay, um, final advice is please don't feel um, restricted. I think we are really looking for blue sky solutions um, um, around 
the cat delivery of care itself. So like, as I said, like Dixon's looking at health screening, we had uh, Gabriel looking at specialty care paths, open to a lot of these things. Um, and I, sorry, just one last question. The, so Anthony, your question is, data need to integrate back with our current hospital system? Yes, but not directly into the HIST, into the hospital information system. It's probably going to sit in a separate data warehouse that we are able to connect the dots together because you don't want to pollute too many, you don't want the systems to be polluting each other, but you want to be able to correlate data points from each side. Um, but yeah, sorry. Yes. Blue sky thinking suggests what you, uh, areas that you feel that we can deliver care on. And we are, would be very interested to understanding what you have to offer. Okay, thank you very much um, once again, Dylan, uh, and the, the, the rest of the team from HNI, um, and to the participants, uh, stay tuned because we've got the Sing Health presentation coming up. But just as a, another reminder, the, the presentation will be available um, on the website healthcarechallenge.sg. Um, and we'll also be sending you an email with those links um, in the next couple of days. So once again, thank you, Dylan um, and the HMI team. Uh, Thanks, we'll, Derek. we'll move on to the next segment, which is um, uh, next slide, please, Malay. And we'll have the team from Sing Health. Uh, Miko will be giving a presentation um, and she'll be joined by Peter for the Q&A. Um, Nico, over to you.